Right, we're going to be targeting rabbits in the pony paddocks tonight, but we're not going to do that until it gets dark. But I wanted to do this bit in daylight because I've got a couple new pieces of kit that I just want to show you and talk about before we get into the hunt. So first up, I've been using uh, JTS dead centre pellets from the shooting party. And I've got to say I've been really impressed with them. Apart from being sensibly priced, they're really consistent. Now I've been running them through my uh, FX Impact Mark II. Now this gun is FAC rated, it's 20, I'm running it at about 20 foot pounds, so it's only just FAC rated, but it absolutely loves the 18 grain version. Um, there is also a 16 grain version, and I've been getting on pretty well with that with my sub 12 gun, so I'm probably gonna try and use those in our next hunting session. So, here they are, I'm not sure how well you can see them, but. They're really neatly made pellets, very tidy, very clean, really good weight consistency. Tonight is gonna be the first hunting session with this, with them with this setup. They've been doing great on the range, so I'm gonna be really excited to see how they do on the rabbits. So the other piece of kit that I want to talk about is the optic that I'm gonna be using tonight. Now, it's the Infrared Tube TD70L V2. Uh, it's been supplied to me by Scott Country. And for what it is, I think it's brilliantly priced at under £800. Now, it's a digital day and night scope, so it's got a full colour image, very sharp by day. Also exceptionally bright colour image in low light at dusk and twilight. But its real strength is the fact that it's got the lamp-free infrared night vision stealth, which obviously I'm going to be wanting to take advantage of tonight. And it actually comes supplied with the illuminator that you need for that. Now, another thing I really like about this scope is the fact that it's shaped like a, t a conventional telescopic sight, so it feels and balances. It's all very familiar to me as a regular rifle shooter, and also it means I can use my favourite sports match scope mounts with it. Um, it is absolutely packed with features. It's got an onboard rechargeable battery, onboard recording, all kinds of other things. Now, I don't like to dwell too much on the kit in these hunting videos, so if you do want to find out more about it, have a look at the Scott Country website. So. That's a quick overview of the kit. We're going to wait for it to get dark and then get onto those rabbits. Let's have a scan, mate. Brilliant. Well, that's the first kill for those dead centre pellets. And what a lovely clean kill that was. We've had to work hard for that rabbit, so it feels good to have one in the bag. It was about, well, I, I did range it when I was scanning it. It was just over 30 metres. I walked in a little bit closer, so the shot was about 30 metres. This setup is zero for 40 metres. So I just gave it a touch of hold under. And as you can see, it absolutely clobbered it over. So really chuffed with that. Let's go and get it. is 
absolutely brilliant. I can't tell you how happy I am to have one in the bag. Let's head on and see if we can't get some more. a few out. We're going to need to get a lot closer so I'm going to stalk in a bit and then have another look. They've all gone in, which is really frustrating because there were quite a few out and we haven't stalked much closer. It's, it's gone really quiet now. The wind's dropped off. As I said earlier, the sky's clear. The damp, dewy grass is really squeaking under our feet and it's a real struggle trying to stalk within range of these rabbits. So as we saw a few here, I think probably we'll try a change of tact. Um, and I'm going to set up, get down on my belly, out in the field from where they ran in and just hope that one or two come back out and obviously because I'm already in position and Nikki will also be stationary next to me we're not going to have all the bumping around of trying to stalk within range so that's what we're going to try. That didn't take too long. No. That rabbit was obscured by some pretty scrubby cover then, but I was just afraid of the difficulties that we've had so far. If I tried to get up and get a different angle or take a kneeling shot, I don't think it would have hung around. So I was trying to give it a few squeaks to make it sit bolt upright. It improved its position a bit, but it didn't do exactly what I wanted it to do, but I eventually realised that there was a clear path that I could thread a pellet through to get that headshot. And thanks to the stability of shooting from the bipod, it's a good shot and rolled it straight over.
that is what you want. Lovely clean kill, that one was only about 25 metres. Uh, so again, the shot wanted a bit of hold under, but that dead centre pellet then struck home like an absolute sledgehammer. That rabbit had no idea what hit it. It was out like a light. It's got to be said, you know, this approach, it's not ideal, it's uncomfortable, and it takes a bit of patience, but it's worth the effort when you're rewarded with opportunities like that. Another partially obscured one there, about 30 metres and another really solid smack to the head. I'm going to make that the last one. I've been sprawled out here for about an hour and a half. It's getting cold and it's getting very uncomfortable. But, um, well, it's been a brilliant proper test for those dead centre pellets. And the new tube has also passed this first outing with flying colours. Now, Yes, it's all very well getting to use brilliant kit like this, but tonight I think has also really proved the fact that you've got to get your tactics right. And I honestly think the rabbits have been so skittish that if we had continued trying to stalk around the fields, the disturbance we were making, I don't think we'd have got anything else after that first one. So by hunkering down, as I mentioned earlier, we eliminated all of that noise and movement that was alerting the rabbits to their to our presence. So when they've come out, they've been completely oblivious. I've been able to just shuffle a little bit and take a lovely rested shot, which has resulted in pretty straightforward, clean kills. So yes, the kit has made a big difference, but so has the change in tactics. So I'm gonna get these rabbits picked up and head for home. The FX infrared combo doing a brilliant job on the rabbits with those JTS pellets there. Next up, we've got an interesting offering from Range Right. Okay, so what I have here is the Rexymex Ixia from Rangerite. Now, as you can see, it's styled along very familiar looking tactical bullpup lines. It also has some very clever tricks up its sleeve though, and is also comparatively affordable, certainly compared with some of its contemporaries, and it has a retail price of 780 pounds. This particular model is a fairly compact 85 centimetres in length and weighs a pretty solid 3.8 kilos. Now, that might make it a bit hefty for smaller shooters, but there is a smaller, lighter, compact model available if you want that scaled down option. That said, I found this one easy enough to carry and shoot, and its design and proportions made it perfectly manageable for me.
Taking a closer look at the Ambed Extra stock, you've got a pretty steep pistol grip. Now this one can't be swapped out for different versions, but I really don't see that as being a problem. It's got some really grippy panels of notched uh, stippling on both sides, and it gives good trigger attack, so it's doing the job that it's supposed to do. As with a lot of ballpup air guns, the cheek support on this one is fairly simple, but it's comfortable enough. Now I had absolutely no problem achieving good eye scope alignment with this setup because this gun's got a really neat push button height adjustment system on its chunky rubber butt pad. Now that ensures that you can get it set up just right to fit you. Another classic ballpup feature on the Ixia is the absence of a conventional forend. Now in this case, the 425cc aluminium air bottle serves as the contact point for your leading hand. Now just beneath the neck of that bottle, you've got a Picatinny type accessory rail, and that's got a really nice forward sweep, which helps to achieve correct weight distribution if you're planning to attach a bipod. Scope attachment is also by means of a Picatinny rail, although this gun also features an inner rail which you can also attach dovetail mounts to. Now there's about 20 centimeters of clamping space which should be more than adequate for most optics. Now on this model, the barrel is 58 centimeters and obviously it's gonna be a bit shorter on the compact. Now the barrel sits inside a chunky shroud and as is typical in most cases, that shroud does provide some sound suppression, but the muzzle is also threaded to accept the silencer, and I think that's gonna be really useful for shooters who really want to hush it down, maybe for discreet hunting or some very discreet backyard plinking. This is the 2.2 caliber version of the Ixia, and it runs a 12-shot magazine. That comes supplied with two of those magazines, plus a single-shot tray. Now those magazines are pellet friendly and each bay is numbered so you can easily keep an eye on how many pellets you have left in there. Now you load the magazine with the clear plate facing towards you and you turn that plate clockwise until it stops. You then drop a pellet into the first bay making sure it doesn't drop out from the opposite side and that holds the inner drum under spring tension. You then slowly return the clear face plate dropping a pellet into each bay as you go. Now once the magazine is fully loaded, you simply slot it back in from the left side of the gun, return the side lever to its forward position and the Ixia is loaded, cocked and ready to shoot. As I've already said, this air gun has a side lever action. Now it's positioned just above the trigger, it's got a nice long drop down handle and most significantly it can be reversed to the opposite side for left handers. Now the actual mechanism, cocking and loading mechanism, is really positive and the first stage of the lever's rearward travel is actually sprung. So as soon as you start to flick it back into that backward stroke, it actually pushes back for you. It's quick, it's reliable and it keeps the shots coming without any fuss. Triggers can be a weak point on ballpup air guns, but I was pleasantly surprised with this one. Now I really like the match type trigger blade, which can be adjusted for height and angle. Now the actual two-stage mechanism can also be adjusted should you want to tinker with it. Now out of the box, this one was actually pretty good. Both stages are pretty short, but there's a clear stop after the first stage and the second stage break is clear and predictable. This air gun has quite an unusual safety catch positioned in the base of the trigger guard. Now it's safe when it's up in the closed position, at which point a little step actually blocks the travel of the trigger. Now to take the shot, you push it down into the open position, which leaves the trigger free to travel and release the shot. There are some other clever features for power adjustment and fine tuning. Now this is a sub 12 foot pound model, so the regulator pressure adjuster isn't present. However, you can adjust output using a small wheel on the left hand side of the stock which chokes the transfer port. Now that has five different settings and they can actually be seen on the little dial on the opposite side of the stock. Now towards the rear of the buck section there is a larger wheel and that adjusts hammer spring tension and has ten different settings. 
The 2.2 caliber test gun is churning out a muzzle energy of 11.5 foot-pounds. Now the Ixia has a regulated firing cycle and also incorporates a pre-chamber and consistency is pretty good. Now shot to shot variation has just about remained within single figures over 10 shot strings. Now your regulator pressure is displayed on a dial positioned just above the pistol grip. The other gauge, which is positioned in front of the side lever, shows you how much air you have left in the main bottle. Now, maximum fill pressure is 250 bar, and from that, at full output, you can expect up to 180 shots in 177 calibre, and about 200 in 22. Now, when it is time to refill, it's simply a matter of coupling up the supplied Foster connector at the inlet just in front of the trigger guide. I've reviewed quite a few Reximex air guns over recent months, and I've got to say that I've been really impressed by just how accurate they are. Now, these guns haven't really been designed to be match-winning air rifles, but they are more than accurate enough for tackling live quarry. Now, this one, shooting from the support of a bench, single hole grouping is the standard at 30 meters, and with the right pellet, grouping remains respectable at 40 meters and beyond. So, that is the Reximex Ixia. It's a solidly constructed, cleanly engineered, Turkish-made bullpup. Now, this air gun has been designed for function, but it also has a surprisingly refined firing cycle. It's also comparatively well-priced, and its price includes a foam-lined hard case. Now, this is the sort of air gun that, in my opinion, is gonna be equally well-suited to shooting on the club range or out in the field on pest control duties. So, do give it a try if you're looking for a solid bullpup. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this episode. Thank you for watching. I'll be back with more in two weeks time, only this time we'll be on the Shooting Show YouTube channel. Same time, same team, same format, but over on The Shooting Show. I'll see you then in a fortnight. In the meantime, enjoy your shooting and stay safe.